Clay. Welcome to my campfire tonight. Come on over, find you a seat up into the smoke. I want to tell you about um, a woman naturalist that um, you probably might not have heard of named Mary Mott's Wills. She is notable to me because she combined an interest in botany with a talent in art to make a great contribution to um, nature conservation. Mary Motts was born in 1875, just 10 years after the end of the Civil War in Virginia. Her family moved to Texas when she was a small child and she actually grew up in Waco. When she became a young woman, she left Texas for a while uh, went back east and studied with the Art Student League in New York. And she studied under several renowned artists there, um, specializing in watercolor. She eventually met and married uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Will Dunbar Wills of the U.S. Army. And as an officer's wife, she uh, went with him to postings in Central and South America. Just before the beginning of World War I, they were posted in the Panama Canal Zone, and uh, Mary fell seriously ill and was confined to quarters for an extended period of time of recuperation. Her husband began to bring her flowers that he found in the lush tropical area where they were living. And as she began to recover from her illness, she took up her painting again, uh, and she became interested in the flowers themselves and uh, started painting uh, the wildflowers that he was bringing to her. They eventually returned to the, to the States, and um, Mary continued to um, paint still life flowers uh, but she suffered a life-changing blow in 1925. Her husband died suddenly at the age of 50. She stayed in the state of Georgia for a short period of time with her husband's family, where she continued to paint wildflowers. And actually, there are um, the originals of her wildflower paintings are held in some Georgia institutions. Uh, eventually, she moved to Abilene, Texas, and she lived there for the remainder of her life. She arrived in Abilene uh, just in time for the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl days. And I think to myself what that must have been like to be interested in nature during that very, very difficult time. Uh, nevertheless, she continued with her work, um, and by 1935, she had gained regional recognition. She gradually uh, became uh, much more like an illustrator than just an artist, um, trying to capture the details of the uh, flowers that she was portraying. Her work was noticed by a botanist named Ellen Quillen, who hosted her first exhibition at the Witte Museum, and um, that kind of launched her career as a Texas wildflower artist. She had many other ex exhibitions during her lifetime, including others at the Witte, uh, also at museums in Georgia and South Carolina, and finally at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Um, <clears throat> Mary's goal in her uh, work with wildflowers was to portray the great diversity uh, and richness of our native vegetation, and she pursued that enthusiastically throughout her life. She was recognized by garden clubs across the state, and she became in much demand as a lecturer, uh, both on botany and on art. In 1960, Mary Mott's Wills collaborated, began collaboration 
with Howard Irwin, who was a graduate student in plant taxonomy at the University of Texas. And together, they produced a book that was published in early 1961, Roadside Flowers of Texas. And this is the original cover of the book. And the book itself, which I happen to have a third edition of, looked like this. Here is the title page. You can see Mary Mott's Wills. And it was published by the UT Press. There's the front plate, front plate a flutter mill. And I'll show you some of her fabulous watercolor renditions of Texas wildflowers. I've actually seen some of these at the Grace Museum in Abilene, which does hold several in their collection. So here are some of the plates. There are 67 of her watercolor paintings that are um, produced, uh, reproduced in the book. Her Career uh, eventually produced over 2,000 paintings, which are held in collections and ex exhibits at museums and in private collections across the nation. And you can find them for sale online. I, I found quite a few for sale. Uh, as I mentioned, the Grace Museum in Abilene holds some in their permanent collection. Her goal was uh, to uh, make a record of the diversity of Texas wildflowers. And I think that she achieved that goal um, very successfully. Uh, a famous botanist at the University of Texas found her work uh, so effective, uh, it was B.C. Tharp, that uh, he arranged for uh, the purchase of 450 of her paintings for the Texas Memorial Museum. Um, this is where the story of Mary Mott's Wills uh, comes together with my own family history. Um, my mother was uh, a nature lover for all of her life, and so I grew up chasing wildflowers across the pastures right here in Erath County. When I was a senior uh, in uh, college at Lamar University, I uh, purchased a copy of this book, in fact, um, for my mother for her birthday. Uh, my mother had training in art uh, when she was young, and at that point in time, she had taken up working in oils and uh, was producing some landscape paintings and some still life florals. Um, as a result of Mary Mott's Will's books, my mother became very interested in painting wildflowers, and she um, began to um, gather up uh, wildflowers by the armload and bring them back to the house um, and put in vases and um, render them in oils. And she continued that work for the rest of her life. Um, she gained some local recognition, and I'll show you some examples um, over here is her painting of white wilds and weed. And over on this side is, of course, the perennial blue bonnets, um, plus um, plains um, poppy mallow. And up here uh, is one of her landscapes. So as a result of the inspiration from Mary Mott's Will's books, book, um, my mother became... Uh, recognized locally for, especially for her work with wildflowers. Um, she's gone now, but I um, do see occasionally um, in advertisements for estate sales, uh, a listing for a Do Dottie Reeves um, original wildflower in oils. So I know her work is still appreciated. I, um, I like to imagine uh, Mary Mott's Wills, um, searching the uh, pastures and country roadsides for the next beautiful flower that 
is new to her and uh, bringing it back and patiently uh, producing a portrayal of that plant uh, in order to um, pass on her appreciation to others. And um, the same uh, can be said of my mother and her work a generation later. Mary Mott's Wills um, died in 1961, shortly after the publication of her book. Uh, she is buried beside her husband in uh, Arlington National Cemetery. Her collaborator, collaborator, Howard Irwin, went on to become a renowned botanist and was eventually the president of the New York Botanical Garden. So you see, historical naturalists, they come from many places, many walks of life, um, but they have some things in common, um, a passion for nature, uh, a curiosity, a strong curiosity, and in the case, case of Mary Mott's Wills, a great gift of artistic talent and training that allowed her to provide a way for the public to access this phenomenal natural resource, our native plants of Texas. Okay, that's my story for tonight. Who's next?